Well, we saw in the last victory game the importance of the goalkeeper. Do you have faith in Alex Paulson over these next two weeks? Uh, that's, uh, for me, that's a, that's a bit of a silly question. Rolls, he's been the best keeper uh, in the league. Uh, all year, consistent, you know, saved us uh, quite a number of points uh, early on and he's been probably the most consistent uh, throughout the season. I can't even recall, you know, uh, errors this year. Um, and, you know, for me, he'll, he'll keep uh, performing the way he has and uh, I have faith in not only him and also, you know, Dunks if he needs to play and, and all, all my other players. And how important is it that you did test Paul Rizzo um, this time? That we test him? Yeah, I think it's important. Um, we're going to try to go there and beat our, um, our record for last game, uh, the zero shots. I think we beat that the last two games. So, uh, yeah, look, they're at home, they're, they're very hard to, to break down. Uh, I think there'll be no different. Um, uh, if you look at the amount of losses, total losses throughout the year, uh, we both have the best record. So, I think it'll be a very good matchup in that sense. Do you have a fully fun squad, Trevor? Uh, yes, at the moment uh, everyone's available, uh, which is good. Uh, my only concern at the moment is Houston Salas. Um, he has a bit of an issue in his calf that has gone all the way through to his foot. Uh, so he's been treated um, daily and we're kind of hoping that he'll be available for minutes, but we'll make a call on that tomorrow. How do you decide the midfield balance? Because that's one area of the field that you've changed quite a bit, um, I guess with him and Miles Tay, more defensive, to like being always a bit more attacking. How do you sort of yeah. decide I, that for the, the starting point is always the opposition uh, and what, they'll, what they'll, um, they'll give. So we'll look at the dynamic of their midfield and compare what our guys can do. Um, so that's why I, I like changing through and, and finding a, a nice balance where we think we can gain an edge. Uh, but in saying that, um, I think this year the one thing that we've had is a lot of consistency even through changes. Um, I think it's been, that's very promising and it allows you to, um, uh, to build, you know, from week to week. So using Melbourne Victory as a starting point for your formation then, mm -hmm. what are you likely to do at the back? Uh, defend well, maybe. No. Yeah. <laughs> but will it be a, five, a five or a four? What you, I mean, what, and what uh, look, your decisions around that? Yeah, uh, I don't think we've used the five yet against Victory. Um, even though they play with wingers, we feel as though uh, what's more important is defending through the central areas and then pushing them wider. Uh, and then it makes it harder for their wingers to get um, a little bit more direct, off their, especially off their centre backs and sixes. Um, so I think we'll still take the same tack because I'm not going there to, to draw or grind a result. The, the, the beautiful thing about this format is that uh, way goals down don't count. So, you know, the mentality is uh, whatever goal we can get, um, you know, obviously is worth its weight in gold. Um, so we're going there with the idea that we're going to attack and, and be in the game. Um, but are there going to be moments where we're going to have to be defensive minded? Yes, uh, you know, it'll be more management of the actual game and, and what the scenario plays out. But yeah, at the moment, uh, I think from a tactical point, uh, you can probably rely on a back four. It's not really giving away too much. Um, but, you know, don't be surprised if we're in a five as well. So there's no temptation at all to get to half time in the tie in a conservative fashion? Look, I think the one thing that probably needs to be made clear is that the league format is about accumulation of points over a long period of time. So, you know, draws are worth the weight in gold, especially away from home. Uh, and the mentality is, um, you know, you're trying to accumulate as much as you can uh, over a longer period of time. Semi-final football is completely different. It's, you know, it becomes about pressure, situations, moments. But you're, we're only relying on 180 minutes and it comes down ultimately to the team that scores the most goals and defends the best. So for us, we could go into this game here and get a 2-0 lead and then we come home and then it's not about us now attacking, it's about maybe defending. So uh, we'll just play out the scenario as we see fit. Um. You've spoken about you know, whoever goes through the style is the one that makes the fewest mistakes. How do you mitigate that over 109? Yeah, that's, uh, if I had that answer, uh, I think I'd be coaching uh, Champions League. I, I think um, it, it, for me, the, the most important thing is, is just mentality. And, and mentality is such a broad, cliche word, but going into the game, understanding the context of the game, being prepared for, um, you know, even small things like, you know, the crowd against, being against you, uh, the fact that you might not have the ball for 20 minutes, the fact that, you know, players might be singled out, you know, players will be overloaded, there might be different tactical changes. It's getting the player to understand what's coming 
and and if they get pre prepared for that mentally uh, then it puts them in a really positive mindset and I think we've done that well the coaching staff and myself we've really worked on that this year um, and this week is no different and I think as well keeping the plays grounded that you know it's just this one game this one first half this second half and that we keep moving um, you know in small steps and focus on the now and I think that will mitigate the mistakes. You'll be pleased to know all your players have said it's a normal game. Yes, like that's good. Game. But it's not really, is it? It's, it's arguably the biggest, two biggest games in the club's history. Right? For the fans, yeah, for the stakeholders, for everyone, but for us it's still a 90 minute game against uh, a bunch of other guys that have done really well and they'll be thinking like that as well. I think any talk about you know, what's on the line and, um, you know, the importance is just going to take away from the actual game itself. The players naturally understand what the context of the game is. It's, it is the biggest game of the season and next week will be the even bigger and then hopefully the third game will be even bigger than that. But if we start thinking about the next game and the game after and talking about, you know, what's going to happen, you know, in a couple of days, again, I feel like it's a, a distraction more than anything. It's almost like a burden. Um, what we can tr control now is obviously the performance in that first 45. Again, I, I say the same thing. And, um, yeah, we'll just go and we'll see how we are after 180. And you've mentioned the Melbourne crowd. How big a factor could that possibly be? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really, I'm, there's a part of me that is going to really enjoy that, soak it up. Um, I think atmosphere in football games is what makes football, you know, special. You know, like if you look at, I watched the uh, Real Madrid and uh, Bayern Munich the other day and I just, I got a buzz watching that, you know, just off the TV and I, and I actually said to my players, uh, you know, in the team meeting during the week, I said, that's going to be us, you know, we, we can, you know, we're either going to be Bayern or Real Madrid, you know, at, and it's just the fans are going to get you through. Now, that can work twofold, right? The fans can get you over the line, but they can also go against you, uh, especially if you don't get good home support when, you know, things are getting tough. You know, a team like Real Madrid, you know, if things aren't going well, you can feel it. You know, I saw Manchester United play the other day at home and they were struggling and then the crowd kind of turned against them. So it can be a negative and that's something that we'll play on. If we feel like the Melbourne crowd, you know, feels unsettled, or they're not in the game, um, we'll use that to our advantage. But again, last week was a big, you know, it was a big eye opener for us as well. You know, um, they've been criticised of you know giving up a lot of games late, but the fact that they with ten men were able to get the um, get the result was fantastic. I think the crowd had a lot, large part to do with that. Is there anything particular you can do to prepare them for that hostile crowd? Your you guys mentioned that before was part of your order. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, th there's many ways of doing it, um, but I don't think until you get into that atmosphere, uh, you, you can really prepare for it. So I think experience. So the, it's more we rely on the senior players leading the younger players and getting them to understand. We also play out some scenarios, and like we've had the last couple of weeks where we've done a lot of scenario-based training where teams are uh, against the wall or they have to play with some sort of um, pressure. I mean, I've seen managers. Um, I saw Arteta in uh, in his um, documentary. Entry, um, you know, getting a big a speaker in at training and playing, and, and they ended up losing 4 1 that game. So, you know, um, <clears throat> you can try many different things, but I think that's where ex experience becomes very, very important. So, we rely on players like Costa, Scotty Wooder, and David Ball. They've all been in these situations before and, you know, talk about their experiences, and they're very good at actually relaying that information to the boys as well. So, it's just a fusion of all those things. Just digressing a little bit, we talked to the Hurricanes yesterday about sure. how they, you know, they've worked with you and are, and are riding your journey and really you know, supporting you all the way. What's that been like this year? Sort of, you and Clark in particular, have you had much interaction? And yeah. Um, how's that gone? Yeah, for, for me, he's a he's a great human. Um, you know, been very open. Um, even uh, previously, uh, we did a lot of work with T Tamady. Um, it was there uh, previously. Uh, they've been very open. Uh, we have a great relationship. We see each other every day. It's always, you know, a bit of a, we have a bit of a uh, casual um, talk about things. Not, nothing ever too serious, but we, we've, be, we've been in uh, a couple of times to see what they've done. Um, even um, Griff's had to do something with his pro license and he went into the environment, enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, they're very open and uh, to be fair, we've got some good ideas, especially the video theme culture stuff that we've done. Uh, that's come from them. Um, and so it's a very good relationship. Because I guess you both have something in common you took on historically underperforming teams and 
lifted them up with a title, you know, side of the title. How, you know, is there any, any secret to it? Or yeah, um, I wouldn't say we were underperforming previously to this. I just, you know, we, we consistently made the six for, uh, for you know, four years. Um, I think it's just more, you know, we, we have the advantage of have coming in with f have fresh ideas and just adding to what's already been in place. Um, I can't really speak to him what he's changed significantly, but for me, uh, you know, I've had the luxury of knowing a, a nucleus of the players um, and then coming in with um, different ideas just to steer us in a different direction. It wasn't like drastic, uh, but it was more to, you know, reiterate what we're about. And I think that's worked. Um, and and as well, you know, we. I, I think just the overall mentality of the group this year has been great to towards um, becoming better and and, and being stronger.